Um, hello, Millie. Thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. Would you be so kind as to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is Millie. I'm a producer. I work in the UK and um, I'm now producing feature films. Good. Okay, so the students have uh, recorded a couple of questions, starting with Mathieu. How did you end up being a film producer? Right, so um, I started out in theatre, actually, in theatre directing, and um, I uh, took a little break from directing. I thought it would be nice to do some animation work, so I started working as an uh, assistant to some directors in an animation studio. Um, and found that I really loved being close to the creative, but not responsible wholly for the creative side of, of the filmmaking process. So um, I really enjoyed producing and production and I found I was, I was good at it. So um, I, I kind of kept going and was making, um, working in production on documentaries and then commercials for a long time. Uh, but what I really wanted to do was to work in feature films to make narrative drama. So um, I went to film school and did a master's for two years to learn more about the craft of narrative drama producing. Okay, yeah, so you're very, mo very much involved in the artistic part of the, of the mm. job. Great. Okay, uh, that leads us straight to the next question from Hugo. Hi, why do you choose the film you produce? Oh gosh, I and mean, there could be so many reasons. I mean, maybe somebody approaches you mm -hmm. with an idea that, that you think is going to be great for any number of reasons. It could be really inspiring, you really like the story, the characters, or something speaks to you about that particular story. Um, but also sometimes it's the people that, that are on board with the project that you mm -hmm. really want to go and work with a particular director or a particular writer. and. Um, even if the story isn't something that you would have come up with, you would have made, it's still, you can be passionate about that project because it sounds like the kind of people, the kind of storytelling that you're really interested in. Yeah, I mean, the question popped up uh, mostly because you uh, seem to be working with the same people um, on different occasions. Uh, film director for Fuel Fire for the Land Dimension. You, you still need to be working again, so... Yeah, I do. I love, um, I love working with the same people again, it's mm -hmm. true. And I, I, I love building really strong relationships with... Um, particularly with directors, because I think a large part of my style of producing is working with directors who need some um, translating, maybe, in terms of, of communicating their ideas to everybody else. So I really like working with people who need... Uh, kind of a quite hands-on person when it comes to communicating yeah. their creative ideas. Okay, well, next question. I, what do you prefer, producing short films or feature films? Ooh, I mean, short films can be really good fun. They can be, because, you know, there's, there's, it takes less time to make them, but then some short films and animation particularly can take years to make, even though it's mm -hmm. only six or seven minutes long, it can still be, two years in the making so um, but then feature films you know any feature film will take years to get from the very beginning right the way to the end so it's a long process and you really have to love um, the story to be able to really commit to that for a really long period so um, in that sense both are great but then you know the feature film is a thing that I think everybody aspires to have something they're really proud of and, uh, and that they want to you know actually see in the cinemas which would be great. Okay, now for another question about maybe the different styles of producing, different, depending on different genres, from Felix. Hi, how different is it to produce an animation movie, such as The Alan Dimension, as opposed to other films with actors? It's really different. It's, it's almost completely different um, disciplines, but that's what I think is really enjoyable. So when you're working with animation, um, somebody once described it to me as it's a bit like um, when, you're, when you're producing a fiction film, a live action film, it's like driving a speedboat. You've got to make fast decisions, you're going at speed, um, and you've got to turn the wheel to kind of avoid collisions. But if you're doing an animation, it's like driving a huge tanker, you know, with all right. the, because you have to know a month in advance how 
soon you're going to need to change direction because it's it's that much longer in terms of its its schedule so in animation you normally work with an animatic right at the very beginning so you have everything very carefully storyboarded you know not only your story but exactly how it's going to work visually from the beginning and then you're in a long production to make that come to life whereas in fiction films more usually you might have storyboards but things change on the day locations weather actors performances so you're working much more making decisions on the fly and mm -hmm. needing to um and, and and also it's more collaborative because your actors will bring something you weren't expecting on the day and that might then change the whole tone of the film you, you really don't know yeah that leads us to the next question uh that from vincent hello the actors of Fuel to Fire are very remarkable for a first film. How did you proceed to gather such a great cast? So those, they, they were amazing. They, they were phenomenal yeah. people to work with. And um, it was the first time really that me and the director had had the chance to work with such accomplished um, actors. And um, it was a real pleasure, I have to say, because they brought so much to every day that we were filming. Um, and uh, I think a lot of it came down to the writing in the script that we sent out to these actors. It was unusual, it sounded very poetic, um, it almost has a, because it's, it's, it's almost kind of like a Shakespearean Yeah, it's tone. very Shakespearean. And I think Definitely. a lot of the actors, they re that really appealed to them because they, it sounded like something interesting to, to get those words and to, um, to work with that style. It's not the normal thing that I think yeah. hits their inbox. Is it something that appeals to you, uh, given your background? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And um, and I, I, th I just, I love the, the kind of poetic nature of it. I, I had worked on one film previously with that, with that same director, which was very, very different in style. And um, But this one, yeah, it, I think a lot of the actors read the script and it just jumped out at them and, and they really enjoyed it but also it really helps when you have one person comes on board and they're you know a really high quality actor mm -hmm. it's much easier to approach other people and start saying so we yeah, have this person so. we'd really love you to come on board and it kind of gives them that confidence that it's going to be an interesting thing to be involved in yeah now for a totally different question because you're here as a member of the jury for this uh, <laughs> festival so here's a question from Remy. This year, you are part of the jury of This is England Film Festival, a festival about short films in English in France. So, could you tell us about this experience? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, a lot of our um, a lot of a lot of my work and the work I, of that I've produced with different directors, strangely, has been very popular in France, and we've been really kind of interested to see that that's been the case. We've been to a lot of different French film festivals. Um, uh, one of the directors, uh, the director of Fuel to Fire, is is part. French as well, yeah. so that's that's been nice him to have that connection and to be able to come and speak about his work in France as well. Um, but I think you know, whenever you travel to a film festival, you do notice there's a certain um, there are styles that audiences seem to prefer, and it does differ country to country. So that's really nice to go and experience mm -hmm. that, and particularly in comedy with the Alan dimension, um, different things get different amounts of laughs, and I love seeing. Really? why you know or what what people find funny and and what really appeals and there's some moments occasionally where um the audience laughs at something that nobody's ever laughed at before and sometimes it's just the night and the people who are in the room and you know you have no idea why but i do i do think there's definitely a a cultural aspect to it a, you know a, a comedic tradition in that country which means that certain things appeal more in some places right. Yeah, and coming back to your position as a member of the jury, so how did that go? Was it your first time as a member of the jury in a uh, festival? Yeah, I've, I've not been on a jury before, so that's been, uh, it was really exciting. I was so um, honoured when I was, was asked to come and do this. And um, it's, uh, it's amazing because it, it puts you, you know, you, you go to so many festivals and your work is often in these festivals. And uh, I've never had to think about the perspective of the people who are trying to make their decisions. And um, you realise that, an awful lot goes into that decision uh, at the end of the day mm -hmm. in terms of it's not just, oh, you know, I like this, it, that appeals. Because particularly if you're on a jury and you are a filmmaker, you're looking for great filmmaking craft, you're looking for great storytelling. You know, you, you're going to be very demanding, I think, of, of each of the films. And it's lucky that this festival has such a high caliber of films because it means we've got so much to choose from. 
And, and would you say that working with Guy and Steve has uh, brought you a different perspective on the way you, you, you perceive these movies? Definitely, and I think you know, everybody's... On, on the one hand, I think all three of us feel very similar about um, storytelling, because I think everybody... You know, Steve's work and Guy's work are, are, are both about telling that story and, and communicating ideas. So on that front, I think we, we feel very similar. But then they are different disciplines. And Guy and myself are probably more similar because we're in, in filmmaking itself. Sure. But then, you know, um, Steve's perspective, um, pl politically, um, but also his... Um, his love of certain styles of comedy has been really great to kind of bring a fresh kind of viewpoint into the room. Okay, one last question from the students, uh, from Anne. You are a young producer, but you have already produced some remarkable movies. So do you have any advice for aspiring producers? That's a great question. Um, so I think um, it, it is, it's kind of tough being a, a young producer because uh, a lot of people don't take you seriously. If you walk into a room and you're asking for a lot of money to be making a film, then um, you have to take yourself seriously and you have to go in and I think uh, um, a lot of it you have to work really hard obviously and, and um, you know be passionate about what you're trying to do and not lose faith. I mean the best advice that anybody ever gave me, uh, there was a producer um, in the UK called Steve Clark Hall and um, He came to us and he said, the best advice I can give you is to stay on the train. And I like that because it's, it's true. There's not a lot you can advise somebody to say, you know, oh, you should try this, you should try that, because it's different for everybody, the path that they take. And it's much better for you to forge your own path and trust your instincts, trust mm -hmm. your instincts of what you really love about a project or a director you really like, you know, don't, don't listen to what other people think. If you love it, you're probably right. Just, just stick with those instincts and learn to trust that and trust your inner voice. Uh, the producer that I work with, he was, says, uh, uh, I have to say it out loud. Once I've said it out loud, it'll happen. And I like that as well, because if you say, right, I'm going to be making this movie this year. This is going to happen this year. And once you've said it, you have to do it. So it's kind of like believing that it's, that it's going to be the case. Great, thanks for them. Uh, one last question from me. I'd like, if possible, I'd like you to give one word to, uh, to tell us about your experience from this week during the This Is England Film Festival. Just one word? One word or, or two words or more, uh, as you wish. Um, inspirational. All right, okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank and, you. And uh, thanks for coming here and enjoy the rest of the, the week. Thanks so much.